eighth graders today we are doing module five problem set for lesson number five we are going to just be uh, writing equations and graphing them so the distance that scott walks is a function of the time he spends walking scott can walk a half mile every eight minutes assume he walks at a constant rate so a predict the shape of the graph of the function so is this going to be a line or not? Is this going to be linear? Well, if I look at the word constant rate, that tells me it's going to be linear, right? So it's going to be a line. This is going to be a line because we have a constant rate. It's going to be a straight line because we have a constant rate, meaning we'll have the same slope. So let me put straight line. Uh, number two. B, letter B says write an equation to represent the distance that Scott can walk in miles. Y is miles and X is minutes. So his total miles is going to be his constant rate times X, the number of minutes. Well, let's find that constant rate. If we have one half over eight, half mile in eight minutes. Let's divide this. Now, if we're going to use a calculator, how do we put one half in, as a, cal in a calculator? 0 0.5 divided by 8, and we're going to get 0 and 625 ten thousandths. 0 0.0625. So our equation is going to be y equals 0 0.0625x. That's our equation. For C, they want us to use that equation to determine how many miles Scott will walk in 24 minutes. So let's look at this. I'm going to come down here for C. For C, if um, y equals 0.0625x, and we know that x, right, is 24 minutes, right? Our x is 24 minutes. x is our minutes. So y equals 0 0.0625 times 24. So let's, let's go back to our calculator. Times this by 24, and we are going to get 1 and a half miles. So our coordinate points for this are going to be x is 24, y is 1.5. Let's go over to D. For D, they want us to know if he walks 12 minutes. So I'm going to come down here for D. Y, remember, 0. 0, 0.0625 times our x, and our x is 12 minutes, so y is going to be 0. 0.0625 times our 12. So let's do this on our calculator. 0. 0.0625 times 12, 0. 0.75. 0,700. So our coordinates are going to be 12 and 0 and 7,500. Let's do E. Um, e, they want to know for 16 minutes. E, they want to know 16 minutes. So let's come down here for E y equals 0 0.0625 times x so y equals 0 0.0625 times our we have 16 minutes for e so 0 0.0625 times 16 and we're going to get one so our coordinates are going to be 16 and one for F, 
they want us to plot these on the graph. Okay, so let's plot these on the graph. Let's go 24 and 1.5. So 24, going to go across 24 and up to 1.5. For D, we have 12, 0 0.75. Go over to 12. 0 0.75 is going to be halfway between 0 and 5 tenths and 1. It's going to be about there. And for E, we have 16 and 1. We're going to go over to 16 and up to 1. So it says, what shape does the graph of the points appear to take? Do we agree that it's taking a line? Kind of looks like it's taking a line. So I'm going to put a line, and does that uh, match our prediction? Yes, it does. Now they want us to connect these points. So let's get my ruler. We're going to connect these points. And there we have a line. Now they want us to say, what is the equation of this line? Well, the equation of the line is the equation we just graphed. The equation of this y line is y equals 0.0625x. That's the equation of this line. Let's go on to number 2. says graph the equation y equals x raised to the third power or x cubed. Okay, so we have y equals x cubed for positive values of x. Organize your work using the table below, then answer the questions that follow. So 0, 0 to the third power means 0 times 0 times 0. Well, that's going to be 0. I'm going to do our whole numbers first. 1 to the third power being 1 times 1 times 1. That's going to be 1. 2 to the third power is going to be 2 times 2, which is 4, times 2, which is 8. Now, I'm going to use a calculator for the uh, decimals. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 and we're going to get 0 0.125 for 1.5 I'm going to go 1.5 times 1.5 times 1.5 and I'm going to get 3.375 3.375, I wanted to flip those numbers around, and for 2.5, 2.5 times 2.5 times 2.5, I'm going to get 15.625. So part A says to plot the ordered pairs on the coordinate plane. So I have the coordinate pair 0, 0. 0, 0 would be right here. Our next is 0 0.5 and 0 0.125. So 0 0.5 and 0 0.12, that's going to be very small, isn't it? Very small. Uh, for 1, here I have 1, 1. So I'd have 1, 1. 1 is going to be hit between 1 and 2. So I'm going to have 1, 1. Um, here I'm going to have 1.5 and 3.375. So 1.5 and 3.375. So it's going to be a little more than 3. It's going to be about there. For here I have 2, 8. So I'm going to go 2 and up to 8. Oh, this sure doesn't look like a straight line. And here I have 
oops, and 15.625. So 2.5 on the way up is going to be above the 6, uh, above 15, so about there. Okay. What shape does this graph appear to take? Mm, I would say it takes kind of like a, a hill, upwards hill, right? An uphill, right? Is the graph a linear function? Is this creating a straight line? No, not a straight line. Now, do you remember when we were learning about linear and we were learning which um equations would give us linear and which ones would not be linear remember we said if there was if our variable had an exponent would not be linear and this kind of proves that consider the function that assigns to each positive real numbers as the volume of a cube with the length sides s an equation that describes as v equals s to the third well that's kind of what we did so what do you think the function will look like well, that would be just like y equals x to the third. It's going to look the same. It's going to be an uphill. Right? Use the function in part D to determine the volume of the cube with side length of three units. So if we have a side length of three units, right, that would be our x. So our would be 3 to the third. And 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is going to be 27. So that's going to be 27 cubic units. Let's go to number 3. Sketch the graph of the equation y equals 180x times x minus 2 for whole numbers. So if I have x is 3... I'm going to have y, I'm going to write it over on this side. Y is going to equal 180 times x, which is 3 minus 2. 3 minus 2 is 1. 180 times 1 is 180. That was for 3. I'm going to do 4 now y equals 180 times x, which is 4 minus 2. 4 minus 2 is 2, so I'm going to end up with 180 times 2, which is going to be 360. Uh, for the next one, I'm going to have 5. So y equals 180 times 5. 5 minus 2, which is 3, so I'll have 180 times 3. Uh, I believe that's 540. Let me check the calculator, though. 180 times 3 is 540. And here I have y equals 180 times 6 minus 2. 6 minus 2 is 4, so I'm going to have 180 times 4. So let's go 180 times 4, and I'm going to get 720. Okay, so we did that. So now they want us to plot these points. So for this one, my point is 3, 180. So I'm going to go to 3, and 180 is going to be just below 200. My next one is going to be 4 and 360. So 4 and 360 is a little more than half. Uh, here I'm going to have 5 and 540. 5 and 540. 
And here I'm going to have 6, 7, 20. Okay. What does the graph of the points appear to take? I think it looks like a line, doesn't it? Is this graph a graph of a function? Yeah, because for each input there's one output. Yes. Each input, one output. Is this a linear equation? Yes. How do I know that? There's no um, exponents and no variable in the denominator. Okay. The sum S of interior angles and degrees of a polygon will take the shape S equals 180. It's basically, um, I'm sorry, the interior angles um, is going to be this equation. So what is, what is if we have the sum of interior angles in a polygon, what's that going to look like? It's going to be a line, just like this. Is this function discrete? Well, if we're talking about interior angles, right, degrees, it has to be discrete because can you have uh, half a side of a polygon? No, you have whole numbers, whole numbers are the sides of polygons. You can't have, uh, a triangle has three sides. It doesn't have three and a half sides, right? Square has four sides, not four and a half sides, right? Polygons, you have to have a whole number of sides. Okay, let's do number four, five, and six. We got to examine these and decide if this could be a function. So let's look at this one. For my input of negative four, I can get one. For my input of negative three, I get two. My input of negative two, uh, I get zero. Input of zero, I get negative two. My input of one, I get a zero or, ooh. Notice that this input gives me two outputs. This input gives me two outputs. Can I have two outputs for one input for a function? No, so this is not a function. Not a function. Because the input of one gives two outputs. Let's look at number five. Uh, input of two gives, oops, and look at this, the input of 2 gives us two outputs, doesn't it? If I input 2, I could get a negative 1, or if I input 2, I could get a negative 3. So is this a function, not a function? The input of 2 gives two different outputs. Let's look at our last problem for today. Is this a function? If I input negative 2, I get negative 4. If I input negative 1, I get negative 3. If I input 0, I get negative 2. If I input 1, I get negative 1. If I input 0, I get 2. If I input two, 3, I get 1. So, is this a function? Yes. Each input has only one output. Have a good day.